the YouTube channel's not any good, but he's a nice guy. I'm sorry, Mr. Bolton. I'm sorry about that. They say it's good to have matching tyres on the same axle. This tyre, as you know, is punctured. And this tyre is now also punctured. A matching pair! Yay! It's a warm one, feeling hot, hot, hot. Well, hello my lovelies, and today I thought we'd do uh, another driving to work video. Uh, it's been just over a week since we did the last one, and to be perfectly honest, I haven't had time to, to do anything else, to make any other sort of um, footage. Um, obviously, Monday I was uh, off on uh, Jolly to Project Nigel and got plenty of footage on Monday. And then the last three days have been mostly editing. Um, managed to get three videos out on Monday, or will have by the time you see this. Uh, the third one is just uploading as I left. So, yeah, and obviously I work as well, um, so I haven't really had any spare time to do anything else, so... Driving to work is, uh, so if I make a video while I'm driving to work, which I have to do anyway, then it's kind of killing two birds with one stone, isn't it? And it gives us a chance to catch up. Which is always nice. I don't miss you when you're not there. Oh, hello. Yeah, you can stay on the road and I'll drive one of the birds for you, shall I? There we are. Well, it's a glorious day, isn't it? Decidedly warm. I hope you can hear me because the, uh, the aircon is on full blast. Now, as you'll have seen from the intro uh, of this video, my tyre troubles continue and it all began on Monday. It all began on Monday. Now, obviously on Monday I took Ms. Hendrick to Pi for uh, to Project Nigel where she will be kind of checked over and popped in for MOT and the idea is that uh, if there are any failures on the on the MOT, then the MOT station right next door to Mustard's place, so he can just quickly and efficiently carry out any repairs that are, are needed, kind of like a one-stop um, shop arrangement. So anyway, I was taking um, Henrietta Pie, wasn't I, to uh, to Nigel Land? Hello, what's that? Carpet, a little bit. Uh, and of course, as you know, or as you will know, if you are a regular watcher of these offences to broadcasting, one of Miss Henrietta Pye's tyres does have a slow puncture. Um, it's got a hole in it. Um, and it requires periodically pumping up. Although, as an aside, by the time I get home tonight, Amazon should have delivered some exciting little bits and pieces for me, amongst which are some do-it-yourself puncture repair kits, which are basically appear to be kind of plastic or rubber screws with uh, an adhesive on them. But if you have an hole in your tyre, you can screw in and this will provide uh, these will provide a kind of semi-permanent repair, so I'm going to try that on a couple. So, yeah, so obviously I had to pump up Henrietta Pye's tyre, but that was a known and expected issue. What was neither known nor expected, and 
after I was getting all excited about um, Stigma 170 car, Pasky's MOT, uh, with the rear tyres that were kind of legal but decidedly borderline. And I'm
driving along. Uh, I hope it's just, oh, hello. I hope it's not too boring. I hope that. Uh, what do I hope? Well, I hope that you love the scenery as much as I do, and I hope it inspires you to, to pay a visit to drive these roads and to visit this area. And I hope you're enjoying all of the stuff that I'm doing with uh, Captain Mustard. We're certainly enjoying doing it. We have an absolute hoot. And one of the things that really annoys us both is that all of the stuff that we think is the best and is the funniest and makes us laugh the most, it always seems to be off camera. We never seem to be filming when, when they happen. In an ideal world, we just have cameras set up permanently all the time that we're, that we're together so that um, all of those lost bits wouldn't be lost. Or maybe you think it's all very silly and it's not funny at all and we ought to act our age. I don't care, we have fun. Again, I hope you can hear me over the aircon, which is howling. I've decided not to use the microphone anymore, uh, at least not until um, I can buy a much better one. Because my eBay £10 special, it just sounds crap. It sounds like you're talking into a kid's toy karaoke machine. So until I can afford to buy one that actually sounds decent, then unless I'm outside in a howling wind, uh, I'm just going to carry on using the, uh, the, the normal mic and I'm using a lapel mic. Now then, were any of you luck here last weekend? Just over the road here was the uh, Cromford Steam Rally, which is a massive, massive, massive thing. All of the fields that you can see, as hard as the eye can see, were jam filled with steam powered doings from all over the place and fairground and 64 million people camping which I'm sure was lovely for them but it was a pain in the butt when you were trying to get to work now you know what happens here don't you it's time to play the game I'm going nice and slowly making a good gap to the cars in front. I've got a car behind me that came up really rather quickly and is probably jolly annoyed that I'm going slower than I really ought to be on this stretch of road. Stay there sir, stay there. Sometimes they try and do a sneaky overtake here. You have to balance your speed so that you're going just quickly enough that they can't overtake. If there's cars coming of course it doesn't matter. And we're now into neutral and we're not allowed to brake. Here we go. Right then Mr Sporty Ford. See if you keep up. I should have a camera facing backwards shouldn't I so you can see what's happening. Oh, God, he's gone backwards very quickly. Oh, keep that on the road. Ah. And... Whee! Oh, I wish I had a camera facing backwards. He's absolutely disappeared from sight as Mr. Sporty Ford. And we've caught up the cars in front. And now we brake because we don't want to die. You would be amazed, I've said it before, but you'd be amazed how many cars end up in that field there. I've just pointed. Why have I pointed? You can't see me pointing. What a silly pointer. Here's a question for you. How do you drive when you're in rural areas like this? Now, I follow the Jeremy Clarkson method. 
which is that without fail, absolutely without fail and on pain of death almost, you obey the speed limits in villages and any built up areas. So you obey the 40s, you obey the 30s, um, and you know, that's, um, that's a maximum, not a, not a target. Feel free to go slower. I am doing, checking my sat nav, I'm doing 25 miles an hour heading through here. And when you're in a school zone and it's during school times, then go at 20. Honestly, how much of a rush are you in? But, outside the villages, when you're just on nice open rural roads, I drive as if my pants are on fire when I feel like it. Sometimes I just waft along with a bit of Radio 4, uh, but sometimes I like to give it a little bit of welly. 12%. I preferred, um, I preferred those signs when they were in old money. 1 in 8 sounds more impressive than 12%, doesn't it? 1 in 8 sounds quite... Where it's 12%, you think, well, 12 is a small number, isn't it? Oh, now then. Good job I remembered. Do you remember last time I took you to work with me and we got stuck in um, a mahoosive traffic jam because there were there are roadworks at the crossroads? Well, those roadworks are still there, so we are going to take avoiding action, my loves. Which means that we will not have the pleasure of driving underneath the Honourable Bridge. But then we won't have the displeasure of sitting for 15 minutes in a bloody traffic jam. Oh, nice. There's the traffic jam just starting. And we are going to avoid the wretched thing. Aha! Because I am cunning. Air conditioning is a blessing, but it doesn't have to dry your throat out. Man with the dog. Now this is actually a really charming and interesting little place. And there are some parts of it that fascinate me. The first of which is coming up here on the left. I don't know why, but I love that little place there with that little green door. I love this bit here, this kind of cut through and then there's like a cutting and then there's that place perched up on top which must be a fabulous place to live and look there's the, I'm pointing again, entrance to it there with those amazing um, stairs cutting into the rock. I love things like that. What an interesting place to live. I like living in interesting places and I like other people to do it too. You're welcome. Say so thank you. So, you miserable old scrote. You're very welcome. Nice lady. Oh, don't mention it, will you, beardy? I'm oh, home. Oh. Kiss my knee, muddy funster. This is a rather lovely old bridge. Doesn't look like a bridge probably to you, but is and then there's an, another nice bridge coming up and then a lovely old railway bridge we're blessed with bridges i haven't done a boat is bridges for ages have i i think the last one i did was the humber bridge and it gave me the willies a bit a bit of a dodgy bridge that one
Oh, I remember the pond in Normandy. I used to drive over it quite regularly when um, I used to go and spend time with my friend Joe, who had a cider farm in Normandy. Like, can we just whiz out here? Have a look. Ooh. Oh, nice MGB. Thank you. Yeah, the Pond de Normandy, that's, uh, that's an amazing bridge. And here's another one for you to answer in the comments below. So we've had what's your favourite bridge that you've driven over. And the next one to answer in the comments below is, what is your favourite service station? And I've got a couple. Um, there's the one on the M5 that I can't remember what it's called, but it's, um, where is it? Somewhere around Cheltenham or Gloucester, somewhere around there. And it's like this amazing kind of farm shop affair. And from years ago, there's the one on the M62 that I haven't been to for 30 years. And I really must, I should do a detour one of these days when I'm at um, Nigel Land. And then my absolute favourite would be, and I thought of it because it's on the way to the Pond of Normandy, and I can't remember the name of the road, but uh, the services are the um, Air de la Vie de Somme. And it's like a service station in the middle of a wildfowl and nature reserve. And the best thing about French services is you can actually eat proper food. You can have a nice meal. Unlike British services, where you pay a fortune to eat something that's absolutely bloody awful. Although, in fairness, the last couple of times I've been, I have noticed some nice noodle places have opened. Tree tunnel. And it's my mum's birthday. Or would be, if she wasn't being uh, dead at the moment. Just mentioning that because as I mentioned on a previous video, my mother loved nothing more than a, a tree tunnel. But, happy birthday, Mum. I've remembered far more often since she died than when she was alive. Oh, I tell you what. Last minute change of plan, and uh, just to be different, I'm going to take you up the back way, if you'll, um, if you'll pardon the expression. Another suicidal pigeon. Because it's quite interesting, there's, um, there's a little place that's uh, called Hammersmith that's got a really interesting history. I was reading up about it last night. The rows of terrace cottages that you'll see, they used to be known as poker cottages, apparently, because when the rent man used to come round to the first cottage, they'd bang on the walls with poker, as then would all of the other cottages, so that people could make themselves scarce because they didn't have the rent money. Oh, bollocks. There was a load of broken glass on the road just there. I can pick up a puncture just by thinking about broken glass, let alone driving through it. Blood and sands. This is a nice little village, isn't it? And a nice little village pub. And here we go, this is Hammersmith, and these were the cottages I was uh, telling you about. There may be a rather nice MG ZS180 parked up on the right hand side. Ah yeah, there it is. Quite a nice one. Considering it's in the wrong colour. Old guys rule. Too right they do. Well said that man. I do sometimes wonder what would happen if a fire engine had to get up this street. 
I think a lot of wing winners might bite the dust. Hey, Frank. Well, better than you by the look of it. Yeah, not very good today, mate. What? Gout. Oh, you poor bugger. Oh. Uh, my old man suffered. Oh, you have my sympathy. That chap there has got quite an amazing collection of cars. Proper classics. I think he's got most of the Renault 4 vans that remain in the UK. Right, well that's us at work my lovelies. Thank you for your company as always and I'll catch you soon.